Okay, we're now live. Hi, Elliot Fishman here. It's uh, February 6th. It's a Thursday. Hope everybody is doing great. Um, depending where you are, I wonder how the weather is. Last night when I was checking my phone, or the Cinderax told me that it was supposed to snow. I looked, it was six to eight inches, but then I looked and it showed snowing for a couple of hours, but the long and the short is it didn't snow. There was a little bit of ice, so life is good. Um, maybe snow next week. Uh, but it is February, so the winter is on the way down. Though the groundhog did say that it was six more weeks of winter, which you don't need to be, to be a groundhog to figure that out, okay? Um, what else could I tell you? Today is Thursday, I did mention that. And today at 5 p.m. we have one of our speaker series. I'm sure most of you follow our speaker series um, the articles in JACR, just terrific. Recent article by Ed Cavill. Tonight's speaker is Jeff Schiller. Here's the uh, information. And um, Chief Revenue Officer for Vox Media, who is going to speak on creating a consumer versus a client mindset, how psychology applies to advertising sales. And it should be really, really good. Uh, Jeff, uh, I spoke with him, a uh, tremendous. Um, thinking about different uh, strategies in marketing has been uh, a leader in the field, one of the uh, uh, most uh, highly sought after speakers, but also uh, a real visionary in the work he's doing, so that should be kind of fun. I don't put it online because, I don't know, when we first started uh, in the COVID era, we did the remotes. Remember those days, everyone had these Zoom bombings. So I've still never recovered from that. I remember we had a friend of mine from uh, um, Amazon. It was just a disaster. But I've never seen that since then, and sh hopefully that doesn't happen anymore. Anyway, if you really are desperate, uh, if you email me or Lily, we'll give you a link. Anyway, um, this is on the gallbladder. That's what I'm speaking about right now. And the thing about the gallbladder and CT it's interesting that the gallbladder is often the source of many misdiagnoses because we don't think about it. So simple things, abdominal pain, rule of pancreatitis, diverticulitis, uh, appendicitis, the gallbladder may be what's involved, right? So you always look at the gallbladder, is it distended? Is the wall thickened? Is there fluid around the gallbladder? Is it inflamed? Is there a dilated common duct? Is there a stone in the common duct? So you could see acute cholecystitis as the cause of the patient's symptoms. Acute cholecystitis can lead to pancreatitis. It can lead to a liver abscess. So in the acute setting, we know to think about, you know, look at the gallbladder. The other thing I've seen a number of cases of, and maybe more important, is gallbladder cancer, which is more common in the older population, 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe 70s, 80s. The older you get, the more likely you are to get gallbladder cancer, but it's not very frequent. The thing is, when you get gallbladder cancer, you have focal wall thickening, and typically it directly invades the liver. And so people often present with jaundice because there's dilated ducts. And then the presentation is rule out pancreatic cancer, rule out uh, cholangiocarcinoma. So, Gallbladder cancer can easily simulate a cholangiocarcinoma because it causes duct obstruction. But what you'll notice is a distended gallbladder and focal wall thickening. Now, one of the challenges is gallbladder cancer, which is typically eccentric in the gallbladder. It's not like a 360. It directly invades the liver and people don't recognize that. So that's very, very important. When you have advanced gallbladder cancer, it gives nodes, and nodes are typically in the porta hepatis and peripancreatic region. So we've seen many cases, or a reasonable number of cases, where patients come to a pancreatic conference for a, a pancreatic mass. And then you look and it's really nodes in the porta hepatis and peripancreatic region. So then you're saying, well, maybe it's a common bile duct tumor, ampullary tumor, maybe it's cholangio, maybe it's hepatoma. But then you look carefully and the gallbladder, you lose one of the walls or a portion of the wall. And you realize what you're dealing with is gallbladder cancer directly invading the liver and then spreading into the nodal regions, causing ductal obstruction and simulating a pancreatic cancer or cholangio or common duct tumor. So again, gallbladder can be a great mimicker. It's also a great source of error. So when you 
see things in the porta hepatis, or when you're evaluating oncology patients in general, look at the gallbladder. If the wall is asymmetrically thickened or you lose a wall, you gotta be thinking about gallbladder cancer, primary gallbladder cancer. Yes, a liver mass can invade the gallbladder, but I have to admit, most of the time when it's eccentric, it's gonna be gallbladder involving the liver. So that becomes very, very important. The other thing is looking at the gallbladder, particularly in older patients, if you see focal wall thickening with or without calcification, you gotta be thinking maybe this patient has an early gallbladder cancer. If you detect an early gallbladder cancer, you get a cholecystectomy laparoscopically, they maybe check the nodes, but basically you cure the patient. If you don't pick up gallbladder cancer early, that's the problem, and you often have a chance, patient may have had symptoms or it's an incidental finding, but you need to look very carefully because if you miss it, or you don't pick it up early, what you're gonna end up with is all those nodes in the porta hepatis, a very aggressive tumor, and something that really cannot be resected. So that indeed becomes very, very important. So that's gallbladder cancer, gallbladder extension to liver, to porta hepatis, that's acute cholecystitis. There are a number of different things, colodocal cysts, things like that which are uncommon. Evaluate with CT, better evaluate perhaps with MR, with MRCP. So we think of that. We also think about uh, patients with gallbladder cancer, routine follow-ups, looking for adenopathy. As I mentioned, when you have gallbladder cancer, it can invade directly into the liver. It also can go to the porta hepatis. Those are the common areas. Now, in terms of abscesses, I've seen a couple of gallbladder abscesses. Uh, you can see that with an ascending cholangitis where the gallbladder is involved secondarily. So you see air in the gallbladder, air in the gallbladder wall, mark thickening, uh, inflammation around the gallbladder. So those are all possibilities. Again, gallbladder abnormalities, thickening, inflammation, secondary to pancreatitis is not that uncommon, and cholecystitis causing pancreatitis. You know, either way, it's not gonna be all that uncommon. What else should I think about? Well, that's probably about it. Um, again, I will mention or go through some of the congenital things you might be doing in pediatric patients or younger adults. But again, when I think of gallbladder, it's inflammation and it's cancer, primary versus secondary involvement. So that's where it stands. So, oh, by the way, if you want to look at the gallbladder, what would you do? I would do uh, a single phase acquisition in venous phase. Obviously, if you really want to get a better look, uh, dual phase imaging, arterial and venous with some reconstructions would be ideal. That's always the ideal way to go. And since it's an older patient, dose is less of an issue. Uh, Looking at the gallbladder with a non contrast CT scan is just not going to be the way to go. So with that, I will stop there and thank everybody for their attention. There's a bunch of new stuff on CTSS to let you know. A number of our, of our apps have been upgraded, the new lecture series, the new quiz uh, for the second half of 2025 is up and available at the Apple Store for free, of course. And uh, Sarah's been working on updating some of the other apps. I think the shoulder, the ER app, a number of different apps to meet some of the Apple requirements. And with that, I hope everybody has a great day. Also, oh yes, on uh, Facebook, you see a lot of these uh, pearls, what I would call them, uh, vignettes. They're blue with a title and a bunch of text easy to read and Lily's doing that. So I, I know a number of people like it and I think you should, it's a lot of work and it's really a good summary of many very important things to all of us. So with that, everybody, see you around. Well, let me see who's here. Oh, Rabia Shupka, bonjour, I, hello there to you, to you as well. Um, it's funny how, uh, because everyone is so busy working, you don't get as, that many people who uh, look at things live, but you get a lot of people uh, who will look at it at the end of the day. It's just one of those things. It's kind of like Netflix. You don't watch it when it's being produced. You watch it after the fact. And I think I'm looking, looking, looking. 
there's only that one comment right now so bonjour and everybody have a great day we'll see you later bye